So we'll start from Anglo-Saxons and the continental invaders in Britain. It is a continued episode of the previous one. So long we have studied about the Anglo-Saxons. They settled in Britain around 450 AD. The Anglo-Saxons came from Germany, Denmark, and Netherlands. Many of the Anglo-Saxons that came over were farmers. The Anglo-Saxons had a very, very bad diet. The Anglo-Saxons lived in wooden huts. First, Anglo-Saxons were pagans. And Britain was originally called Albion. Albion is the most ancient name of Great Britain. It sometimes is used to refer to England specifically. Occasionally, it refers to Scotland or Alba in Gaelic. Albin is Irish and Wyard Albin in Welsh. The Anglo Saxon Britain, the Divadian ruled very differently to the way we know now. By 556, Britain was divided into seven kingdoms Northumbria, Mercia, Wessex, Sussex, Kent, Essex, and East Anglia. Each was ruled by a different king. They fought to defend their kingdom or take control of other kingdoms. The oldest human remains so far found in England date from about five lakhs years ago. So the Anglo-Saxons, which are divided and ruled very differently to the way we know now, by 556, Britain was divided into seven kingdoms, Northumbria, Mercia, Wessex, Sussex, Kent, Essex, and East Anglia. Each was ruled by a different king. They fought to defend the kingdoms or take control of other kingdoms. So, we come to know about these Anglo-Saxons who were resoundingly defeated by the Britons. But frustratingly, we don't know much more than that. Later, Welsh source says that the victim was Arthur, but it was written down hundreds of years after the event. <clears throat> When it may have become contaminated by later folk myths of the of such a person. Edward the Confessor, the last Anglo-Saxon king of England, died on 5th January 1066, 950 years ago. He was only 950 or more years ago. He was only king of Saxons. Alfred the Great was the king of West Saxons from 871 to 886 and king of the Anglo-Saxons from 86 eight, until his death in 899. He was the youngest son of King Ethelwulf and his first wife, Osbert, <coughs> who died both. Both died when Alfred was young. Now, on 12 July 927, the various Anglo-Saxon kingdoms were united by Athelstan to form the Kingdom of England, as we know today. The four kingdoms in England were in place for around 100 years, from 829 to 929 AD, when England was united as one. The four kingdoms were East Anglia, Mercia, Northumbria, Essex. Harold Godwinson, also called Harold II, was the last crowned Anglo Saxon English king. Harold reigned from 6th century. 6 January, sorry, 6 January 9, 1066, until his death at the Battle of Hastings, fighting the Norman invaders led by William the Conqueror during the Norman conquest of England. Anglo Saxon made their own clothes, clothes out of natural material. The men were low, wore long sleeved tunics made of wool or linen, often decorated with a pattern. The trousers were woolen and held up by a leather belt from which they could hang their tools such as knives and pouches. There are many reasons, <clears throat> including some Anglo-Saxons were warriors. The three main reasons that Anglo-Saxons came to England. There are many reasons. Some Anglo-Saxons were warriors enjoyed fighting. Many Anglo-Saxons came peacefully to find land to farm. 
whole family say it sets sail across the sea to live in Britain. So life was more dangerous in Anglo-Saxon England than in the modern times. And in addition to the hazards of war, food, and capital punishment, Anglo-Saxons could be at the risk from famine and epidemics, as well as from the range of endemic diseases, including degenerative arteries, leprosy, and tuberculosis. So Anglo-Saxon's biggest contribution to Britain are many. Some may be mentioned, they bequeathed us, bequeathed us spellbounding poetry. They inspired Europe's first renaissance. They gave us the greatest of all Britons. They fashioned our legal system. They preached in the language of the people. They wrote brilliant histories. They shaped the England we know today. So why were the Anglo-Saxons so powerful? One reason an Anglo-Saxon king of sufficient power was the military power. More specifically, they could call on the FYR they feared to fight when needed, which supported the king's house girls in his own smaller army. Now, Anglo-Saxon Britain or Anglo-Saxon England, the early medieval England, is existing from the 5th to the 11th centuries. From soon after the end of the Roman Britain until the Roman, until the Norman conquest in 1066, consisted of various Anglo Saxon kingdoms until 9 to 7, when it was united as the Kingdom of England by King Althelstan, that it is read as 927 to 939. So, key events from the Anglo Saxon era include 1080. The Romans left Britain for good, leaving it unguarded and vulnerable to invasion. 430 AD Christian mission arrived in Britain with a mission to convert people to Christianity. 449 AD, the Anglo-Saxon arrived in Britain from mainland Europe. So the Anglo-Saxon achievement was culture, religious, economic and political, art, architecture, vernacular and Anglo. Latin writing and scholarship are all remarkable. There were tensions between tradition and Christianity, but there were also compromises and accommodation, a turn of fusion. Betty gave a precise date, 4498 for the first arrival of the Anglo-Saxon in his ecclesiastical history of England. And he said they came from three tribes, the Angles, the Saxons, and the Jews who themselves came from different parts of Germany and Denmark. Dangles run from the England, which is a small district in northern Germany. The Saxons from now what is now. The Saxons were from what is now known as. Each king ruled a kingdom and led a small army. The Anglo-Saxon kings were from ruling families who passed their power onto their children. From time to time, the strongest king would claim to be Bretwalder, which meant ruler of all Britain. When the Anglo-Saxons, Jews, and Christians invaded Britain during the 5th and 6th centuries AD, the area they conquered slowly became known as England from Angel Land. Anglo-Saxon, the greatest of them was the king. The most famous of them was King Alfred the Great is the most famous and celebrated of all Anglo-Saxon kings. His statue stands at the heart of a number of southern English towns. And they were originally pagans, the Anglo-Saxons, worshipping pagan gods and nature. They were great warriors who hunted in saints and spent life with energy and enthusiasm. There was a unique mix of savagery and sentiment of emotion and action. So, the most important in Anglo-Saxon society, their life was kingship and lordship. The strongest ties in Anglo-Saxon society were to king and lord. The ties of loyalty were to the persons of a lord, not to his station. There was, there was no real concept of patriotism or loyalty to a cause. Some sources say that Ang the Saxon warriors invited to come to the area no, now known as England, as we know them today, known as England, to help keep out invaders from Scotland and Ireland. Another reason for coming may have been because the land often flooded and it was difficult to grow crops. 
So they were looking for new places to settle down and farm. So when the Anglo Saxon invaders, when did they come to Britain is a great question. The Anglo Saxon period in Britain spans approximately the six centuries from 410 to 1066 AD. The period used to be known as the Dark Ages, mainly because Britain's sources for the early years of Saxon invasions are scarce. The Anglo Saxon, what did the Anglo Saxon do when they invaded Britain? Because they were invited, whole families set sail across the sea to live in Britain. They brought tools, weapons, and farm animals with them and built villages and new homes with Picts and Scots, B I C T S and Scots, attacking from the north. The Britain invaded, the Britons invaded some Anglo Saxons to help defend them, but they didn't leave. Now, who are the Anglo Saxons today? The continental Saxons are no longer a distinctive ethnic group or country, but the name lives on in the names of several regions and states in Germany, including Lower Saxony, which includes central parts of the original Saxon homeland known as the Old Saxony. Saxony in Upper Saxony as well as Saxony and Halt, A-N-H-A-L-T. So ultimately, if we try to understand the meaning of Anglo-Saxon, they were a member of Germanic peoples conquering England in the 5th century AD and forming the ruling class until the Norman conquest compared and Engel, A-G-L-E, A-N-G-L-E, J-U-T-E-S-A-X-O-N, and Englishman. So the language they spoke was Old English, the anglo saxon spoke. We know as Old English, an ancestor of the modern day English. Its closest cousins were other Germanic languages such as Old Frisian, Old Norse, and Old High German. Now, are British Anglo Saxon? A great question arises. This study found that modern southern, central, and eastern English population were of a predominantly Anglo Saxon like ancestry while those from the northern and southwestern England had a greater degree of indigenous origin. After looking into the continental origins of the Angles, the Saxon legends, he, know, he notes that the land earlier called Britannia had taken its present name, Anglia, from one of the victorious invaders, the Angle, A-N-G-L-I, Angli, also they call it. Britannia is now called Anglia, taking the name of the victors, William of Porteous, a northern historian. That is his opinion. So who lived in England before the Anglo-Saxon? It was the Britons. Britanni, Latin Britanni, also known as Celtic Britons, the ancient Britons, were the indigenous Celtic people who inhabited Great Britain from at least the British from Iron Age until the High Middle Ages at which point they diverged into Welsh, Cornish, and Britons, among others. Who started the Anglo-Saxon? They traced the origin to settlers who came to Britain from mainland Europe in the 5th century. Although the details are not clear, their cultural identity developed out of the interaction of incoming groups of Germanic peoples with the pre-existing Roman British culture. The earliest Anglo-Saxon kings were Anglo-Saxons, starting with Egbert, E-G-B-E-R-T in the year 1802, 8 sorry, 802. Anglo-Saxons ruled for about three centuries, and during this time, they formed the basis for the English monarchy and laws. The two most famous Anglo-Saxon kings, Alfred the Great and Canute, C-A-N-U-T-E the Great. The English language developed from the West Germanic dialect spoken by the Angles, Saxons, and other Teutonic tribes who participated in the invasion occupation of England in the 5th and 6th centuries. As a language, Anglo-Saxon Old English was very different from modern English. Anglo-Saxon is a term traditionally used to describe the people who from the 5th century CE to the time of the Norman conquest 1066 inhabited and ruled territories that are today a part of England and Wales. Also, the Anglo-Saxon had slaves and slavery is not something from a golden age, however, a lot of historians think it should be called a golden age because of how wealthy England was. England had traded lots of other countries and imported silver from Germany 
to make coins. They became known as Anglo-Saxons. Then the Angles, the Saxons and Jews, were tribes who came from the Northern Europe and Scandinavia, from places that we now call Northern Germany and Denmark. It is one of the Germanic languages derived from a prehistoric common Germany, Germanic originally spoken in Southern Scandinavia, Northern parts of Germany. Old English is also known as Anglo-Saxon, which is derived from the names of two Germanic tribes that invaded England during the fifth century. So, and the Saxons were warrior farmers and came from Northwestern Europe. They began to invade in Britain while the Romans were still in control. The Anglo-Saxons were tall, fair-haired men armed with swords and spears and round shields. They loved fighting and were very fierce. The profound impact of the Anglo-Saxon had on the English language from bringing Old English to England and shaping its vocabulary, grammar, and alphabet can still be seen today. And the legacy continues to be an important part of the language's history and development. At the beginning of the Anglo-Saxon period, paganism was the key religion. People would worship a number of gods and goddesses, each responsible for their own area, area of expertise. Anglo-Saxons, they are known as pagan Anglo-Saxons, also believed in going to the afterlife when they died, taking any items they were buried with them. Their religion was called paganism. The Saxons were very superstitious and believed in elves, goblins, and dragons. The Anglo-Saxon worshipped the gods, T-I-W-2, Wooden, W-O-D-E-N, Thor, T-H-O-R, and Frigg, F-R-I-G. So the Anglo-Saxons were a group of farmer warriors who lived in Britain over a thousand years ago, made up of three tribes who came from, came over from Europe. They were called the Ang Angle, Saxon, and Jude tribes. The two largest were the Ang Angle and the Saxon, which is now how we have come to know them as Anglo-Saxons today. So, Alfred the Great, was the king of Wessex from 871 to 886 and later king of the Anglo-Saxons. He spent years fighting Viking invasions, eventually winning a great victory of the Battle of Eddington. So the first British king was Athelstan. He was the king of Wessex and the first king of all and England. James VI of Scotland became the James I of England in 1603. Upon accession to the British throne, he styled himself King of Great Britain and was so proclaimed. There were actually three main peoples, the Saxons, the Angles, and the Jews. After these people moved to Britain, they became known as the Anglo-Saxons. Eventually, the name of Angles became the English and their land became known as England. The Saxons are named after the type of sword they used called the Sax. So why is the Anglo-Saxons important in the history of English literature? The Anglo-Saxon period includes the creation of an English nation. But many of the aspects that survive today, including regional government of shires and hundreds. During this period, Christianity was re-established and there was a flowering of literature and language. So where did the Anglo-Saxons invade? The Anglo-Saxons settled in the eastern parts of Britain in what is today Kent, Sussex, Essex, and East Anglia. The majority of the native British population either remained where they were or migrated moved west to what became Wales and Cornwall. So who first came to Britain? Often this question is raised. They were known as Homo Hidelbergensis. Homo Hidelbergensis. Tall and imposing, this early human species is the first for whom we have fossil evidence in Britain. A leg bone and two teeth found at Box Grove in West Sussex. Living here about five lakhs years ago, these people skillfully butchered large animals, leaving behind many horses, horse, deer, and rhinoceros bones. So the Oldest human remains so far found in England date from about five lakhs years ago and belong to a six foot tall man of the species Homo hidelbergensis, from where the name comes. 
shorter stuck in Netherlands. Neander Dutchers, Vizianola and Neanderthals from Netherlands. Neanderthals visited Britain about three lakhs and 35,000 years ago, followed by direct ancestors of modern origin, more modern humans. The four kingdoms of England were in place for around 100 years from 1829 AD to 929 AD when England was united as one. The four kingdoms were East Anglia, Mercia, Northumbria, and Wessex. So the powerful among the Anglo-Saxon kings, many historians regard Ofa, O-F-F-A, as the most powerful Anglo-Saxon king before Alfred the Great. His dominance never extended to Northumbria, though he gave his daughter Athlade in marriage to the Northumbrian king Athelred. One in 792. So it is said that Athelstan was an Anglo Saxon king who lived from 894 to 939. He's regarded by historians as the first king, king of England. Athelstan was the son of Edward the Elder and grandson of Alfred the Great. So the beginning of the Anglo Saxon invasion was in the 5th century BC when the Teutonic tribes started enslaving England. The names of the Angles, the Saxons, and the Jews. So, the Anglo Saxons term used historically to describe any member of the Germanic people who, from the 5th century to the time of the Norman Conquest, 1066, inhabited and ruled territories that are today parts of the England and Wales. And we know these territories very well because it has become a name that is very common to us today we know that they are the people whom we respect today as the anglo-saxons or we have admitted that they are the anglo-saxons so according to saint berry and the vulnerable the anglo-saxons were the descendants of three different germanic peoples the Anglin, the Ingles, the saxons and jews by Betty's account, do those people originally migrated from northern Germany to the island of Britain in the fifth century at the invitation of Bortigren, a ruler, Bortigeru, Bortigeru, a ruler of Britain, to help defend this kingdom against Scotland. So there are also archaeological evidence suggests that the first migrants from the Germanic areas of mainland Europe included settlers from Frisia and antedated the Roman withdrawal from the Britain about 410 CC. Their subsequent settlements in what is now England laid the foundation to the later kingdoms of Essex, Sussex, and Wessex. They are all Saxons. East Anglia, Middle Anglia, Mercia, and Northumbria, known as Angles, A-N-G-L-E-S, and Kent Jutes, ethnically the Anglo-Saxons, actually represent an admixture of Germanic people with Britain, pre-existing Celtic inhabitants, and subsequent Viking and Danish invaders. So the peoples of each of the various Anglo-Saxon kingdoms spoke distinctive dialects which evolved over time and together became known as Old English. So the Old English that we know today has originated from here. And with it, Within this variety of dialects, an exceptionally rich, wonderful literature emerged. Examples include the masterful epic poem, Beog, an Anglo-Saxon chronicle, a collection of manuscripts that cover events in early history of England. So the term Anglo-Saxon seems to have been first used by a continental writer in the late 8th century to distinguish the Saxons of Britain from those of the European continent whom St. Mary the Venerable had called Antiki Saxonies, Old Saxons. The name formed part of a title. And Rex Angul Saxonum, King of the Anglo Saxon, which is sometimes used by King Alfred of Wessex, who reigned 871 to 899, and some of his successors. By the time of the Norman conquest, the kingdom that had developed from the time of the Norman conquest. The kingdom had developed from the realm of Anglo-Saxon people. 
had become known as England. And Anglo-Saxon as a collective term for the region's people were, was eventually supplanted by English. For some time thereafter, Anglo-Saxon persisted as an informal synonym for English. Now, Anglo-Saxon continues to be used to refer to a period in the history of Britain, generally defined as the years between the end of Roman occupation and Norman conquest. So during that period, though the various people commonly grouped together, the Anglo-Saxons were not politically unified until the 9th century, and their reign over England was interrupted by 26 years of Danish rule that began in 1016 with the accession of Canute. So this is what we know of the Anglo-Saxon period in life. The next part of it includes continental invaders in Britain. That will be done in the next session. So the next session will include what the continental invaders in Britain. And here certain names will undoubtedly come from what you have studied till now. So we will know about them in the next episode of the story of the Anglo-Saxon and the Continental Invaders. Hmm. And this will be included in episode 3 of, of our discussions later. So till here, we will end our continuous process of discussion from this period of the history.